my name is James Bellissimo. I am your town manager, and I've been in this position for a little over a couple months now, and I'm just endlessly fascinated by what the town has going for it, um, the future we have together. Um, I, I, it's, it's a privilege to be in this position. Um, I can be reached anytime, just about anytime, at extension 111 at the town hall. That's 207-698-1101, extension 111. You can also be reached at townmanager at berwickmaine.org. A few updates for today. Uh, first, starting with the edge. Uh, as you can see outside, uh, the development started to mobilize. They have temporary power to the site. They're actually, right now, at this very moment, they're removing started some of the facade. And they'll be working on removing the walls and installing windows, storefronts, um, and they'll be removing some of the equipment on the roof and they'll be shoring that up. So over the winter, you're gonna see that building transform into something that's gonna look pretty nice, pretty new. And they have tenants that are interested in leasing space. And ground will be broken on the rest of the site in probably late spring or into the summer of 2022. They're, they're just waiting on a DEP permit. So things are moving along um, nicely for the project. We're gonna see some major pro uh, progress over the next few years. Um, for We have an update on water. We have some pretty big upgrades in the works. Our engineer is actually the same engineer that worked on the Summersworth plant upgrades. So they're very familiar and we're very familiar with the river and what needs to be upgraded to address the manganese issues and the disinfectant byproduct issues. There's a whole scale comprehensive upgrade that um, is planned and we have several sources of funding. The, the town approved a bond of $1.2 million, but also we have the ARPA stimulus funding and we've been chosen to make one of the final rounds of a congressionally, congressionally directed spending program those two amount to over $3 million. So between that, the bond, and smaller amounts of funding, we can completely revamp our water system and fix the manganese issue once and for all and tremendously upgrade our water system. And just as a note, even if you're not on the water system, you're still benefiting from it. I mean, the, our schools in Berwick utilize, uh, the Housing School uses the water system and it's, it's critically important to have that infrastructure downtown for economic development purposes. Um, for recreation, so much, stuff, so much good stuff's going on. Angela has done so much and um, she, she's been here just under a year. Um, we've worked with um, her and the uh, Abutters to Memorial Field to uh, purchase three acres to expand Memorial Field. And the short-term plan is to look at trails and the long-term plan is to create an additional field there. So there's a, a whole feasibility study that's online and there's some presentations online as well. I highly recommend checking that out. There are plans for the next five, 10 years and beyond. Happy to share the holiday parade and tree lighting is on for this year. December 4th is the parade at 1.30 and the lighting of the tree is at 4.30. The Legion is taking nominations for Citizen and Business of the Year. It's a great award and it's a great program that Legion puts on. It's a fantastic opportunity to recognize the people in Berwick and the businesses in Berwick that make Berwick a truly special place to live and work. Um, a very warm welcome to our new assistant planner, Tam Tammy Bellman. She takes my old position and she's been here for four days and um, she's fantastic. She's got some great ideas, comes with a wealth of experience and knowledge. Just happy to have her um, and see where between S and PDC and where the planning board's at to see where that, the planning department is, is going to go. It's exciting. She can be reached at um, extension 124 at the town hall and her email is planning at berwickmaine.org. Um, and then one of the hot topics for planning lately has been cluster developments. 
So just as an example, say there's a 20 acre parcel that used to be farmland. You know, you drive by it on School Street or you drive by it on, um, say it's Blackberry Hill Road or Wentworth Road. And there's nothing stopping f from house lots coming in and the minimum lot size is about two acres. So what typically happens is two acres per lot that's 10 houses that take up those 20 acres. So now that just becomes all houses, 20 acres, it's all, all houses. And that really cuts into the look and feel, of the, the rural charm and the rural character that we all so cherish. What clustering does, it allows to reduce the lot size. So say there are one acre lot size reductions. That means 10 house lots on, on 10 acres and that preserves in perpetuity forever 10 acres. So it's a way to, it's a, it's a, it's a cause we can't stop. If, if a house lot is allowed to be there, we can't stop it, but we can control it and we can make the best out of it. And that's really what our ordinances and regulations are all about is making the best out of these situations. And there's always work to be done. There's always refining that can be done. There are a ton of tools at our disposal. It's just about, just about finding the right toolbox for our community. And that's what the comprehensive planning group is all about, is figuring out where we are, where we wanna go, and what tools we wanna to put into place to get there. The last piece, um, I just wanna talk about growth for, for a second. For the 2010s, so from 2010 to 2019, we had, an, we had an average of 23 houses that were built per year. Compare that to the 2000s, we had 65 built per year. In the 90s, we had 28 built per year. In the 80s, we had 61. In the 70s, we had 32. So the growth rate on a per year basis is at a 50 year low. Now that's not to say that where the, where the growth is happening, it is cutting into the rural areas or it's happening in the rural areas. And we want to centralize that where our infrastructure is and where our natural resources aren't. Um, so the growth rate in our school population is fairly stable at this point, but there's still work to be done just to make sure that where growth is happening is, is where we want it. So there's a, it's, it's an endless topic to go into, but um, we're always looking for feedback or for suggestions. If there's something that speaks to you, whether it's natural resources, recreation, economic development, um, anything like that, reach out to planning, reach out to Nicole, reach out to myself. We'll be happy to help you get plugged in. There's tons of data available I'm happy to share, and there's projects and reports available online as well. I, there was a question on the update from the wells situation, the like well exploration. So we explored five or six um, underground potential underground water sources, and none of them came back with enough quality or quantity to become our new water source. So that was that was the f option A, or that was our first. Um, first study to see if we could find an underground source that needed less treatment, that wasn't high in manganese, to be able to plug right into an underground aquifer source close to downtown and close to our infrastructure. So that, it did not bear fruit. We are aware of other underground sources, but they are too far away from our water systems. So maybe 10, 20, 30 years from now, we start exploring those. They're they're on like Little River, Ridley Road, Hatfield Pond area. Um, so our best option at this point is to improve the Salmon Falls water river quality. And we do know what it's going to take to get it to where it is of good quality. So if there's anything I missed, uh, I'm sure there'll be more, I'll be back. Um, until then, uh, feel free to visit and I'll see you next time. Thank you for your time and bye.